The Thames Valley pastor has received an apology by Thames Valley police after nine constables stormed his church, threatening him with a fine, and then later turned up at his home to threaten him yet again. 49-year-old Daniel Mateola was forced to abandon his congregation in a service which was being held online. The incident happened at the Kingdom Faith Church in Milton Keynes last week, and Pastor Mateola is thought to be the first pastor to have faced prosecution under the ultra-virus and Bill of Rights mocking coronavirus lockdown rules. The police force have since made their apology and said it was a mistake. <laughs> well, that's okay then, isn't it? Tory MP Peter Bone, who's clearly been sheltering under a rock since the start of the year, said, I'm flabbergasted. This looks like a police state and it's the sort of thing that would happen in communist China. Flabbergasted the police made an apology, you mean? Or flabbergasted the police got it wrong? Maybe you're flabbergasted there's no mention of racism. I mean, what about all the people whose stories have been in the media and shared online, being abused, attacked and assaulted, embarrassed by the police's lack of self-control, lack of intelligence and lack of a backbone to refuse to police powers that are clearly very wrong and unlawful? He continued, you would think the police officers might have better things to do than persecute someone doing an online service. Instead of breaking it up and trying to find him, they should be congratulating him on what he's doing just as they should be congratulating everyone who's continuing to stand up for their rights, because the police are clearly too stupid to see that what they are doing now is going to directly affect their own children's future. Not that they care, so long as they are get to be part of the untouchables. Well, for now, until senior police need a scapegoat, that is. Government regulations updated on November the 5th at the start of the second lockdown Broadcasting an act of worship is allowed, but should only involve those people working or volunteering who are essential for the content of the service and for technical support to enable people to watch the worship and worship online. The rules add that if musicians and singers usually form part of that worship, then they may also participate, even uh, if they are essential. However, no maximum limit on the number of people is stipulated. And isn't that convenient? But they can limit the amount of people who can attend a gathering of other like-minded people to petition against the erosion of our rights. Maybe it's because the powers that be know that religion is one of the biggest causes of war uh, and allowing people to continue with their religious practices while eroding those rights that would allow us to do something about government's decisions simply means there's more chance of unrest. Pastor Mattiola said he had eight film crew and five musicians, which he said was the minimum needed for his broadcast. All had been temperature checked and used hand sanitizer on arrival. A member of the public made a noise complaint and two Thames Valley police officers turned up around 7pm. He said he tried to explain to the police that this was an online church service broadcasting according to the guidelines, but they wouldn't listen. He sent the singers home, but the police, still not satisfied, shut the service down and called for backup. By the time they arrived, there were nine police constables and just five people left in the building. And of course there were. The police no longer understand proportionate response and instead of trying to engage in a friendly manner with people, they simply try and show uh, a show of force in order to intimidate innocent members of the public and in this case, a church event. He said it was just evident that they didn't know what the guidelines were. I didn't think there was any need to call for backup. I found it all quite intimidating. Just days later, Mattiola was faced with two plod on his doorstep to warn him that he faced court proceedings if he didn't pay the fine. He added, my wife has taken it really badly and my daughter has been asking why the police were at our front door. It's been a traumatic experience. Andrea Williams, chief executive of the Christian Legal Centre, said it was sinister and almost unbelievable that the police turned up at the pastor's home. She called on the government to recognise that the freedom to worship was needed more than ever during the pandemic. It was a week after the incident when Pastor Mattiola was informed there would be no further action. Chief Superintendent Robert France Gold, commander for Thames Valley Police's response to coronavirus, said it appears there has been a misunderstanding by our officers of the legislation in place in what is an ever-changing and complex area of enforcement. He added there has been a mistake in the issuing of this ticket and I would like to apologise for the distress I know this is likely to have caused. Well, as long as they say sorry, it's all that matters I suppose, as that seems to be the new get out of trouble card. Uh, regardless to the potential damage the police have caused. I think maybe, and I'm not a religious man myself, but maybe the police should start praying to a higher authority for redemption and to confess their sins. 
Time is running out for those who are trying to control us and causing us heartache and pain. Those who have died or who will die, not of COVID, but because of the governments and the police handling of COVID, will be waiting for you when it's your turn. And I don't think they'll be accepting your apologies. Big thank you to channel supporters, especially these guys. Your support is truly appreciated. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Let me know your thoughts, as I know many of you will. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials.